So as I was meditating on what I should be speaking to the children of God this morning, the Spirit of God gave me the uh, uh, the the burden to minister from these two portions, from these two verses. So let's look and see what the Word of God is speaking to us, or the Spirit of God is saying to us. Uh, when we look at the uh, two people, Adam and Eve, in the prior chapters, so we know the story in creation how uh, Adam and Eve were spending all their time with their God and their Creator, and how they um, would would uh, walk around the garden and in the cool of the garden and the, in the evening. God would commune with them. But we see what has happened in their lives when they have not listened or continued to be obedient to the voice of God and they, they ended up uh, uh, being deceived by the enemy. And this is why we see that the Lord God had actually had to drive them. And as we see in verse 24, he drives them away from the garden and he places these uh, angels, cherubims, and a sword which uh, keeps them away from that garden. So, in, so that they will not once again come to that place see that these uh, protection, the protection mechanisms have been set, which are these angels of God. So si similarly, today we see that in the lives of many believers, there is a going away from the presence of God. see that there is no true desire for the children of uh, many of these uh, children of God to have a desire to read the word of God or to be found in his presence in his word we see that many children of God have been deceived in this manner So we do not know yesterday, for example, during the uh, time of fasting and prayer, how many have been at home and joined? And we see that their lives are in a place where they're so comfortable being at home and not wanting to be even partaking in the, in the uh, assembling together of his children. And because there is no desire found in them uh, that they uh, to be found in the presence of God. We see that there is a lot of what we call uh, confusion in the lives of children. Many are going through turmoil. They are crying for many reasons uh, because they have been walking away from God. And we are in the time that the the Spirit of God has departed many lives and they're losing out on the blessings that God has in place for them. And there's only a few that are remaining that are wanting to be committed and faithful to the Word of God and His, and his ways and His house. And many may be sitting in their places, wherever they are, and say, will there be a return of my joy that I once had 
in my life. And some may be thinking, will there be a blessing once again that the Lord will give me in my own life? As an example, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, how that uh, David and his men were at the uh, the story of uh, uh, in the story where they come to Ziglag and the Amalekites had invaded that area and the time that David and his uh, warriors or his servants that were fighting with him had gone out to battle uh, we see that Zigla, uh, the, the Amalekites had invaded uh, this uh, the people. And when when finally David and his men were come to their to back to the city, one Samuel thirty and verse three we read that David and his men came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. And so in verse 4, we see David and the people that were with him lifting up their voice and weeping until they had no power to weep. Uh, and the story reads that David's two wives in verse 5 were taken captive. David was in verse 6 David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his sons and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God so similarly in the lives of many believers just as David did not know that he was going to be restored of all his blessings, we see that he is also vexed and grieving in the sight of God. And then when we see that David inquires of the Lord in verse 8, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord gives him clearance for him to do so. And we see that one, he had the faith and the belief that he will recover all. And none, no, none of what was uh, taken from him was uh, left in the hand of the enemy. Let's turn to the book of Psalms. Chapter 42. And verse 1. The book of Psalms. Chapter 42. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. So we can imagine that as the heart or the deer is looking out for water, uh, thirsting for this fresh and uh, moving water, uh, we can say that David also had such a deep desire for the house of God that he would be waiting patiently and saying, when is this house of God going to open so that I could run in and worship my God? Verse 2 says, My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? 
in Psalms 87. verse 5. Yeah, Psalm 87 and verse 5. It says, And of Zion it shall be said, This and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish it. And verse 6. The Lord shall count when he writeth up the people that this man was born there. Selah. Dearly beloved, what shall we understand from this verse is that each and every one of our names has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There is an account that you and I were born physically and also born again in the Spirit of God and God has written our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we can never forget what, has, uh, what the Lord has done for us. It says... Uh, uh, that this man, this and that man was born, and uh, the Lord shall count when he writeth up the people that this and that person was born at such and such time. In uh, the song that we sang today, the first song, that song that we sang that says he's the lily of the valleys. He's the fairest of ten thousands in to my soul. And we see this again being described uh, by uh, in the Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 11. Thy lips, O my spouse, droppeth the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under thy tongue, and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. We know in the psalmist, uh, the psalmist in Psalms 119, uh, or 19, I believe, says that the word of God is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. And here we see that uh, this uh, the writer here in Song of Solomon in chapter four is saying the the the, the lips of his spouse or or they drop at the honeycomb and honey and milk are under the tongue. So he's describing such a great love that he can enjoy. And then same Song of Solomon chapter 5, and then verse 20. Uh, 5 verse 10 says, Who is she? that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. Similar to the song that we sang, saying, who is this God that is uh, fairer than all the lilies of the valleys, the bright and morning star. There's a description, a beautiful description that the writer here is also saying, Solomon is saying uh, uh, about the Lord, about his own God. And there is no way for you and I to understand the glory and the majesty and the beauty of this God. He has become the rose of Sharon and the lily of all the valleys. When we look in our own lives and our heart this morning, 
do we have a deep desire? Are we here with a desire to see this lovely God who is fairer than all of 10,000? And this song is the song that the writer is singing. Is, is he's more fairer than tens of thousands. So the, this morning, as God's children, as you and I are given a privilege to worship him and praise him, because he is a God who is more fairer than ten thousands in this world, because he's the uh, a lily among the valley. And the, the, the God that is uh, uh, in, in uh, the same as the, the lily in, the, in all the valleys uh, in, the, in the forest as well. So the Lord may help us to each worship this great God in this beauty that he is only uh, that he only has that we are even unable to describe but the lord may help that we may worship him in spirit and in truth